Good morning, everybody. This is a live emergency update as Tropical Depression 9 has been named in the Caribbean Sea just to the southwest of Jamaica. And a majority of forecast models are showing this thing making a beeline toward Louisiana as a very significant uh, hurricane in the Gulf of Mexico. Sea surface temperatures are incredibly warm, uh, even uh, greater than 31 degrees Celsius, that little zone right off the coastline of Louisiana. Right about here, some of the warmest sea surface temperatures anywhere in the world. Uh, They're right in the north central Gulf of Mexico, and that is definitely going to help uh, to facilitate rapid intensification. Once this thing exits the western tip of Cuba and then moves over the Gulf of Mexico, that's what, when it's going to increase without bound. But anywhere from the Texas coastline to the Florida panhandle still needs to watch this thing closely. You can see there still is quite a bit of model uncertainty there. These are the G, uh, GFS ensembles. Uh, that you're seeing here the 6z models i'm still waiting on the 12z runs to see if that eastward trend continues and then the satellite image back in the bottom right uh, that shows the infrared image of uh, tropical depression 9. Uh, there is a lot of deep convection over the mountains there of the greater antilles well to the northeast of the center but the closed rotation that is tropical depression 9 is a little bit southwest of that smaller convective blob there just to the southwest of jamaica yesterday and the day before we thought uh, that this was going to take a further left track further south over the tip of the Yucatan and uh, could uh, was it looked like it was heading toward Texas but the models since that time uh, have been trending off to the right and uh, the European model agrees as well uh, the European ensembles also show an intense hurricane uh, heading toward the coastline of Louisiana uh, this is weathernerds.org uh, the website where I'm uh, using this uh, uh, the model visualizations here weathernerds.org is an incredible website uh, to check out uh, these uh, spaghetti plots here uh, for the, the two main models, the GFS and the ECMWF. Uh, I know there are a lot of other models as well, but uh, generally speaking, any single model cannot perfectly depict the initial conditions of the atmosphere there. There's differences in assimilation of that data. Uh, you could uh, perturb uh, the initial conditions to try to get an average, uh, basically the average of all the different ensemble members of those initial conditions is probably a more representative depiction of the initial conditions of the atmosphere. So ensembles with just slight perturbations of those initial conditions uh, of the same model can uh, give you an idea of the uncertainty of a given forecast and how closely clustered those individual members are. Uh, if they're very closely uh, clustered, uh, that means that there's a high confidence forecast. If there's a big spread, uh, it's a relatively low confidence. And uh, the confidence in this track, even before the center formed with Tropical Depression 9, is just remarkable, taking it right up that pathway between Cuba and the Yucatan, unimpeded, right into the Gulf of Mexico, where the thing is just going to go nuts. And uh, probably one of the more life-threatening uh, storm storm tracks that you can really take a very storm surge prone area there in the north central Gulf of Mexico. If it does take this track toward, toward southern Louisiana, um, that area just doesn't need another storm, uh, especially after all those storms last year. Uh, recovery continues down there in Cameron Parish, especially up toward Lake Charles. Uh, even Category 3 Hurricane Zeta there that came in a little bit further east. And if this one comes in further east and impacts southeastern Louisiana, the levee systems are really going to be under a lot of stress, about the, the most stress that they possibly can be with this track. Of course, there still is a chance uh, this forecast could fall apart, but confidence is increasing, and confidence is already high uh, in this forecast evolving, and I'm likely going to be heading down to the Gulf of Mexico uh, later on today, maybe tomorrow morning. Looks like more than likely uh, tomorrow morning I will head down there. Uh, these are the hurricane model intensity forecasts, all showing this classic rapid intensification here in the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, these models are all going to adjust upward likely too, as they often will underdo uh, the rate of rapid intensification, even when you have those perfect conditions over the Gulf of Mexico with that big high pressure aloft, uh, sea surface temperatures, absolute bathwater out here in the Gulf of Mexico. And look at those really warm temperatures right uh, just offshore of Louisiana. So when we had Hurricane Delta and Zeta last year, uh, we thought that maybe that uh, cooler water, uh, because of those shallower waters right offshore of Louisiana uh, during the late season, would help to weaken those storm systems. But uh, similar to what happened with Hurricane Laura last year, 
the shallow water cooks uh, when it's uh, sunny out there during the peak season, when you have that high sun angle. And that leads to these really warm temperatures right off the coastline of Louisiana. And uh, these are greater than 31 degrees Celsius. And really for a tropical cyclone to intensify, you only need about 28 degrees Celsius there. And really anywhere north of the halfway point between the Gulf of Mexico is incredibly warm. But even these yellows out here, those are greater than 30 degrees Celsius type water. Uh, even this water uh, upwelled uh, to the north there of the Yucatan Peninsula isn't too bad. Uh, it's what, what is that? Uh, it's probably, looks like that's about 27 degrees Celsius. So even that is borderline. Uh, but really the Gulf of Mexico overall is absolutely cooking. And uh, those oranges up there, those are greater than 31 degrees Celsius, 32 degrees Celsius there, uh, right along the immediate shoreline. Uh, so uh, the uh, temperatures are absolutely perfect uh, for, for big problems out there. So uh, definitely keep that in mind. And uh, now I'm going to show you this one run here of the GFS model. Uh, and you can definitely see that it, it's just the operational GFS. Obviously, there's a lot more value. Uh, and just looking at the uh, different ensembles. And also, we have an enhanced risk for severe weather across Iowa today. Uh, we don't want to forget that. That's mainly for a threat of damaging straight line winds. We also have that slight risk in central Montana uh, that we absolutely uh, will need to break down. Uh, but here is the GFS model here. Uh, right now, this uh, tropical depression is at about 1,005 millibars. So this is back on over at the Tropical Tidbits. Dot com website here for Tropical Depression 9. Dr. Cohen, Levi Cohen, who now is at the Joint Typhoon Warning Center out there in Hawaii, does a great job maintaining this site. And the operational GFS has trended even further east. This is the 6Z run last night, but it basically makes a beeline right towards southeastern Louisiana uh, there. And one thing that's really concerning with this as well is the track after it makes landfall, it heads up toward Tennessee, the mid uh, uh, Mid-South there uh, looks like areas that were so ravaged by those flash floods to the west of Nashville. You've got potentially more rain on the way with this track of this system, bringing that heavy rain into uh, Middle Tennessee and then up towards the Mid-Atlantic, probably bringing this tornado threat with it as well. Uh, when I cover this hurricane, I'm going to be coming down there with the Sawyer water filters that can churn out 500 gallons of fresh drinking water a day from the tap. Uh, so after this hurricane... Uh, if anybody needs fresh drinking water, uh, the Dominator 4 will be down there with these Sawyer water filters uh, producing clean drinking water for everybody after the storm. I may also head a little bit inland and cover the flash flooding and the tornado potential with the storm. Uh, but look at that intensification right after the western tip of Cuba. Hardly losing a step with this eastern track. And I'm really curious what the 12Z models are going to show uh, here as well and to see if that eastern trend is even going to continue uh, just a little bit more. Uh, the 12Z hurricane model tracks are coming in, uh, and they have a remarkable agreement heading straight uh, toward the northwest over the western tip of Cuba, pretty close to the Isle of Youth, and uh, then heading toward uh, southern, southeastern Louisiana. Notice how there's no members now further west, but still Texas, you're still in play anywhere from the middle Texas coastline through southern Louisiana, Alabama, Mississippi, even the Florida panhandle. Needs to keep a very close eye on this. One thing I've learned through tropical meteorology is usually surprises uh, are commonplace all the way up until uh, these things uh, make landfall. So that is definitely uh, something to also keep in mind here as this heads off to the northwest. These are the 6C models. Uh, remarkable agreement there. And uh, the scary thing is that a majority of this, these members show this thing intensifying into a pretty strong hurricane too as it heads toward the central Gulf Coast. And I'm going to be uh, bringing the Dominator 4 this evening at 5.30 down to Sasha and Critters uh, to add some more waterproofing, to get some more Flex Seal liquid uh, put on the outside. I've got some new components from WeatherTech as well that I'm going to put all over the vehicle, a stone protector, protector as well to pr try to uh, protect my air conditioning filter on the front end of uh, Dominator 4. And then I'm going to be heading southeast toward the target area. Still trying to decide whether I should bring Gizmo down there uh, or not, uh, or if this is just a little bit too much uh, for poor little Gizmo, even though she has been through a Category 5 hurricane. Uh, I think just uh, with all the flooding and the potential of even having to abandon the vehicle, uh, going on foot, 
uh, might just be a, a little bit too much uh, for a poor little gizmo uh, there down uh, in the hurricane zone. But it looks like this thing could come in as early as Sunday night. Uh, so keep that in mind. And there still could be some adjustments uh, with timing on this system. Uh, but very easily could come in as early as Sunday night. And uh, right now uh, the GFS is coming in hot here. So let me shimmy on over to the 12Z GFS. There it is. And uh, it looks like it's pretty unchanged. Uh, that shift E seems to have stabilized. Uh, this is the furthest out portion. This is after it made landfall, showing this system heading northward through northeastern Mississippi toward western Tennessee. Big time flooding rainfalls, sadly impacting the same areas that were impacted by the big flooding uh, there in Waverly, Tennessee, to the west of Nashville. Uh, but really what I wanted to look at was a rainfall graphic with this 12Z GFS as this is coming in. But we could look at the operational GFS track here. And this, again, is the 12Z. We already looked at the 6Z ensemble members. And it looks like it is just taking a beeline towards southeastern Louisiana right now. So that would be a really bad track for areas like Venice uh, down there, up toward New Orleans. Uh, also the coastline of Mississippi up there. Uh, Waveland, uh, Bay St. Louis uh, would also have some serious problems uh, with this uh, type of a track there. And uh, also has a pretty substantial hurricane coming into southeastern Louisiana as well. Uh, so this is going to have to be one of those situations where you keep an eye, where you have a good idea of where the levees are located. Uh, you know where those areas are uh, outside of the storm surge zones. Uh, could be a 15 to 20 foot type storm surge with this maximized over the coastline of Mississippi there, southeastern uh, Louisiana, including the mouth of the Mississippi down toward Venice, Louisiana, where we rode out Hurricane Zeta. Uh, absolutely heed those evacuations. Uh, because this is the real deal uh, here. And the 12Z GFS that's coming in right now is similar. At least shows that that eastern, eastward shift has stabilized a little bit. Uh, but it basically shows a worst case scenario for southeastern Louisiana uh, there, including New Orleans. Uh, definitely a threat for a mega disaster uh, with this uh, system as well. I mean, no doubt about it, that's just, that's just a big problem right there for New Orleans, Lake Pontchartrain, Slidell, uh, all these uh, communities as well to the south of I-10 and I-12, uh, down to the marshlands there of southeastern Louisiana. This would be absolutely devastating uh, track as well for Venice down there, those poor communities, Grand Isle. Uh, you just don't want to be down there in the marsh country. All of this is going to be underwater, under a storm surge with this scenario here. All the way through Mobile Bay, I would have life-threatening, destructive storm surge with this type of a path. Uh, not dissimilar from a Hurricane Katrina track here at the end. Uh, Katrina came over the Florida Keys and then ramped up. This one's coming in almost from southeasterly direction. It would pile up the water up the mouth of the Mississippi. But immense pressure on the levees out there. And uh, this is the 12Z GFS that you're seeing coming in. Let's see what some of the uh, initial QPF... Uh, some of the rainfall uh, type situation, the, the situation is going to be out here, probably pushing 20 inches of rain. Yeah, you're, uh, definitely an excess of a foot of rain, and you'll likely be pushing 20 inches of this. And notice how it brings that heavy rain up toward western Tennessee as well, central eastern Mississippi, western Alabama. Uh, just a big stripe of flooding rains uh, there coming up through southeastern Louisiana southern mississippi as well uh just an absolute huge problem here uh new orleans southeastern louisiana slidell uh bay st louis gulfport pascagoula mobile uh even the western florida uh, panhandle pensacola there would see a big time surge uh from this type of a, a system that's likely going to be a large system too a lot of times these uh tropical systems that will come out of the caribbean like this usually are large in size as well uh, that will expand over the Gulf of Mexico, move into the northern Gulf of Mexico. Storm systems like Rita, Katrina, uh, even a Hurricane Michael uh, come to mind. A little bit smaller of a storm, but this one looks like it's going to be a monster as it uh, comes into the northern Gulf of Mexico. Big flooding rains. Bad news are that these areas 
that were so impacted by flooding rains before. And that includes the mountains of North Carolina as well. Out there, some of the higher terrain uh, could also exacerbate uh, the flood recovery situation out there as this thing turns off to the northeast around uh, the western edge of that Bermuda High. So no doubt, this is as real as it gets, everybody. Absolute big problem. So now let's uh, take a look at the enhanced risk back here in Iowa. A lot of this is due to wind and these complexes of storms. There's already a severe thunderstorm watch ongoing in eastern South Dakota uh, into southwestern Minnesota for that complex up there. Uh, let's take a look at the RAP meso analysis. And honestly, my focus has really been on Tropical Depression 9 and the threat of the mega disaster out there. I know that I should be focused uh, on this upper Midwest system. We did talk about it yesterday, at least the threat of supercell storms across central Montana starting to evolve. One thing that I noticed here in southwestern Minnesota is that that squall line is definitely north of any surface space instability. Plenty of mid-level instabil uh, instability through a deeper layer in the troposphere. But it is showing the development along the outflow boundary there in western Iowa. Uh, development of some line segments, uh, windbag type producers uh, there across western Iowa. There is a 2% tornado threat as well. And uh, you can actually see some decent storm relative felicity that is expected along that outflow boundary. Two to three hundred, zero to one kilometer storm relative shear, northwestern Iowa into central Iowa along that boundary. Um, Montana looks like the low level shear is going to be lacking. Cloud bases are going to be too high up there. You're going to have a lot of cold pools, a lot of evaporation of cooling there across central and southeastern Montana. Uh, but I just don't see the tornado threat being too robust out there. I do think there is a better tornado threat down into central Iowa, central and northwestern Iowa there. And you kind of do have an expansion of that wind shear. Let's take a look at the low level jet here at 850. Such an important part for tornadoes. And you have your standard southerly low level jet over the Iowa Corn Belt there, about 25 to 30 knots out of the due south, more than sufficient to generate that tornado threat. And that's gonna be over top those easterlies at the low levels uh, there, right along that boundary, kind of a pseudo warm front type of a feature uh, reinforced by outflow from these complexes of storms but the wrap is one of the best models that showing destabilization out here uh, in the corn belt uh, behind these complexes of storms and it shows central and northwestern iowa uh, having plenty of destabilization with a nice axis of 4,000 cape streaming from south to north through western iowa so i do think that there is a chance of a tornado threat there in the northwestern part of the state that classic zone there we can take a look at the HRRR and see how well that handles destabilization. And it's relatively late summer. Sun angle is still very high. So I do think that Iowa is going to have no problem destabilizing, uh, as it always does, usually when you have these morning complexes of storms out there across the northwestern portion of the state. We'll look at some later HRRR runs that maybe have a better opportunity at an accurate representation of these early day complexes or dissipating complexes of storms. Got so many weather maps up here, it's bogging down my computer. So there it is by 21Z, showing a couple little bean-shaped windbags up there developing. Those are probably supercell storms, the HRRR seems to show. Definitely has some rough agreement with the wrap there across western Iowa at developing some supercell structures. It even shows this eastern one reinvigorating to the east of Des Moines. Uh, the wrap also shows this area across northwestern Iowa destabilizing along that boundary. Uh, so I do think that that Western one is a bit more confident. I 
That's kind of cool. Simulated in for IR uh, satellite imagery here on the Pivotal Weather site. Showing those monster updrafts there along that pseudo warm front or reinforced outflow boundary down there. And there you can see it uh, as depicted by the HRRR. You can see this boundary here. I could see definitely a tornado threat that could evolve along this boundary, especially with storm motions that are relatively parallel to this boundary. Uh, this will help to cause those easterly surface winds as well, which could act to increase that zero to one kilometer storm relative shear up above 200, 200 meters squared per second squared, more than sufficient for that tornado threat. And you can even see a little pseudo perturbation, uh, pre surface pressure perturbation that might migrate along this low as well and lead to a little kink in it with that surface, uh, that uh, supercell storm anchoring along that as well. I think that this eastern supercell is more likely to be elevated there to the east of Des Moines. And you really want to target this northwestern Iowa zone. I do think it looks quite favorable for a tornado threat. The eastern Montana target is kind of falling apart. Likely it's too dry, and you do kind of have this mesoscale low-level jet developing down here into northwestern Iowa, about 25 to 30 knots. Classic tornado producer, low-level jet up there. We can look at the 0 to 1 kilometer EHIs as well and get a better idea, even better idea, of uh, where the co-location of that low-level shear and instability is. And the best low-level shear and surface base cape is located right along that reinforced outflow boundary into western Iowa there. Uh, definitely a decent environment, 0 to 1 kilometer EHI, uh, well in excess of 2 there. Uh, the HRRR is showing a slightly better environment across far northeastern Nebraska, southeastern South Dakota. Don't rule that zone out either. Even though the uh, convective allowing models are mostly initiating this zone here across northwestern Iowa, I could see some storms further west into that environment up there near Yankton, South Dakota, up there north of Norfolk. Even though the HRRR doesn't convect to this zone, has a little bit of sinking motion behind that subtle pressure perturbation, little jet streak in there that's going to be able to fire this monster supercell into northwestern Iowa. So Iowa storm chasers that are out there, you're very lucky to be able to chase this setup uh, looks like a very nice uh, tornado producing setup and then expanding into a wind event that appears like it's going to propagate southward toward the Des Moines area uh, as more of a wind bag. Maybe some embedded uh, tornado warnings in there as well. Maybe even some flash flooding up there. This is at 0 Z, so about 7 p.m. Uh, that line of storms is going to propagate southeast toward the Des Moines area uh, and become a mesoscale convective system of its own, helping to transport heat and moisture from the surface of the corn to a loft in the troposphere and poleward on our planet. Uh, even MCSs, basically a hurricane is a glorified MCS, uh, but even these MCSs, MCVs are very important on a large scale for transporting latent heat from the abundance of convection that, uh, that helps to define them. So watch out there, initiation at around 4 p.m northwestern Iowa along that reinforced outflow boundary. Uh, that's where I would target this afternoon if I was tornado chasing, but I do need to get my vehicle waterproof today at 530 so that I can make it down in time to chase the hurricane. Big time hurricane heading toward southeastern Louisiana, uh, but I do expect a tornado threat and multiple severe weather days in a row here across the Midwest. Uh, so while I'm chasing this hurricane, uh, I'll be continually watching the Corn Belt and those tornado warnings that are up there as well. Uh, but this is just too big of a system, too powerful of a hurricane for me not to chase it there along the central Gulf Coast. Uh, really anywhere from Mobile through central Texas, the middle Texas coast is in play here for this system. Looks like it's going to be a major hurricane coming into the central and northern Gulf of Mexico. I'll be chasing this thing live. So thank you, Facebook supporters, for making these live briefings possible, for making it possible for me to storm chase live with multiple phones as well when I'm out there chasing down these hurricanes, severe weather, flash floods, winter storms as well. And we are going to be returning to our storm chase EDU content during the fall once we get a breather, once I'm able to get back to my mom's house. And uh, in the meantime, we also do weekly Q&As every Sunday, even though this week we did it on Monday. Uh, we do a Q&A uh, provided exclusively to Facebook supporters as well. 
So I'm going to keep slinging these live updates as uh, the forecast models change. Uh, but right now, uh, this thing looks like a very intense storm. Well, right now it's just a tropical depression, but right now it looks like it's going to be an intense storm uh, by the time it gets into the middle portion of the Gulf of Mexico and after it crosses Cuba. Right now it's Tropical Depression 9 located just to the southwest of Jamaica. You can see Jamaica because it's got all those convective explosions over the mountainous terrain over there in Jamaica. I think those mountains are taller than 8,000 feet or at least pushing 8,000 feet there in the middle portion of that beautiful country. Uh, but you can see that spin, closed rotation, 1,005 millibars, maximum sustained winds about 35 miles an hour out there with Tropical Depression 9 and uh, forecast models. Remarkable agreement on ramping this thing up into a big time storm in the central and northern Gulf of Mexico. Interest there throughout the coastline of Louisiana. Get ready uh, to make those evacuations, if you, especially if you're in a mandatory evacuated zone. You know if you are. And uh, there's likely going to be some surprises in the forecast track right up until the last minute. But forecast confidence is remarkably high for this system that right now is in Tropical Depression 9, just to the southwest of Jamaica. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in to my weather reports. Have a great rest of your Thursday, and I'll be live again this afternoon and evening with more updates on this dangerous hurricane that's heading toward the Middle Gulf Coast.